what up, players? Subscribe! What up, players? Warbot stay up in this mood. Got the new tomb, not tomb, vampire accounts, Karen Wraith. And we're going to do a from box to battle video. We're going to take you through the process of looking at the figure on the sprue. And we're going to put it together, then we're going to paint it and show you the finished product. So here's the cover art. It looks great, it looks creepy, it's got that very uh, creepy looking death fi deathly figure floating off the ground. And uh, the thing that I'm surprised with is that they didn't make a set of these models, put them in a set, you know, like they did with the Ushab T or the, you know, monsters like the Minotaurs or... Um, even though it's not a monstrous creature, just I, I kind of figured that with these guys they would have put them into a box set, but maybe they did that. They didn't do it because these are, they, they kind of changed the rules, I think, in The Last White Dwarf on how you use them. They don't make their own, their own units anymore. They're more like upgrades. I'm not really sure if anybody can clarify the rules for me because I, I haven't picked up the new issue yet, but let's take a look at this brew and see what we've got. So first of all, we've got the distinctive base pre uh, created for you to fit exactly how it, how the model is going to sit on it. Then we've got the different parts of the body. You can kind of tell how everything is going to go together. And then the hands holding the scythe. Then you do have three options of skull faces. Of course, the one in the box uses this open mouth, one screaming skull at the end. Which, uh, frankly, of course, yeah, obviously you'd use that one. That's the most interesting. So, see, this is kind of what I don't understand because they, they include three options for heads but only one body. Whereas all of the other sets so far in the Storm of Magic releases only had one option for the face or for the head. And so it, it's interesting that they put three in there. Do you decorate the base with the other two? I don't know. Maybe you just keep them for your bits box. It's like, hey, thanks for buying this single model for however much you paid for it. We've got some extra skulls for you. Skulls for the Warhammer game! Alright, so I'm gonna put this together and then we'll show you what it looks like when I return. Alright, so here's what I've finished of the Karen Wraith. As you can see, there's a really bad join down the center of the back of the cloak. So, let me see focus a little bit more on it. What I found when, when I was gluing it all together was that the two halves of the outer cloak didn't join correctly. And I might have, it might have been my fault if you take a look at the instructions here on the back of the packet. When you glue number one into number two, I don't know if maybe I, I positioned it wrong or whatever, but when I tried to connect it with number three, the two halves didn't join exactly on on the back, and so it had this really bad seam down the center, which I covered up with green stuff. If you ever need any green stuffing help, I suggest checking out Van Hammer's videos if you already don't know who he is. He's fantastic, his videos are so great and so helpful, and he's like the green stuffing master here on YouTube, so check him out. I, I took some of his tips and tricks on how to make the green stuff smooth and try to using using water and and trying to avoid getting fingerprints on it, so it came out okay. I think it'll be even better once it's covered with paint, so I'm gonna let that dry. Then I'm going to cover this guy with primer and paint him up, and we'll show you what he looks like when he gets back. The last thing I want to point out for you is that the the base, if you didn't see in the earlier part of this video, had a little empty slot right where this rock is. And the rock is actually connected to the bottom of the robe. So the base, that part of the base is actually molded onto the bottom of the robe, even though the robe just looks, looks like it's floating along and it's just barely touching the rock. It, it's, the rock is actually a part of the robe and not the base. So when you've got the model completely built, you glue the rock onto the base in this position and 
you have yourself a model that's sturdy, it's connected to a large surface area, which is the rock, and the only way you can really bend this thing out of shape is if you really go at it and apply a lot of force, which you know you're not going to do. So I'm going to paint this guy up and we'll show you what he looks like when we return in the next video. Alright players, here's the finished product. The can wraith, I painted him up to look ethereal and ghostly with these blacks blended into the blues, into the whites for the hems of his robes and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I'm going to be posting up a video on how to paint this Cairn Wraith in case you want to paint them up yourself. So I painted it up while I was, or I, I recorded it while I was painting him up. So, so you can follow my paint scheme, you can follow the steps that I did to paint him up for yourself. But I hope you liked it. I got plenty more War Boss tutorials and unboxing videos and stuff coming up. Also looking at some Malifaux models and they look really great too. So I'm going to see if I can pick some up, trade some stuff maybe for them and, and do some videos on them as well. Do something a little bit different. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this From Box to Battle video. Hope you liked it and please leave me lots of comments and, and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed and don't forget get off my lawn